Don't you go pull a fast one. You used to be an awful rascal. You think you invented being bad. No, it all. I used to be a real ruffian. Had to become a tough one. You think you invented being bad. You don't know nothing at all. Don't you go pull a fast one. You used to be an awful rascal. You think you invented being bad. I used to be a real rough, you had to become a tough one. You think you invented being bad? You know nothing at all. A perfect moment for me is a perfect kiss. I think that is the best, most perfect moment, kissing someone. I don't think in any time period, um, you know, people look back at golden ages and golden eras, and whether they think about the 80s and the face, or you know, the 70s and punk, and we always look back. I mean, I I look back to you know the beginning of house music quite frequently at the moment, and we always look through uh, rose-tinted glasses when we do look back. But I think it's it's fair to to remember that um, there's never a great big gulf of um, very individual, very stylish, very soulful people. They're always quite rare, I think, in every age. Obviously, with the media saturation of fashion, uh, and it has reached new heights with celebrities and all that kind of rubbish that you read about in magazines now. Um, yeah, it's a bit depressing to see things that came out of genuine kind of rebellion or spirit or soul be kind of appropriated into uh, mass culture and then, you know, the whole lifestyle just sold to you wholesale. Um, I think that's best avoided. Um, and make up your own mind about the things that you like and, and that suit you and that complement your, your character. It's about just uh, getting to know yourself, I think. That's what style is. I think any woman fear of being left behind. It's so important. In the, it seems so important if you look at magazines and television and film to be young when you you know if you're a woman. It's not so important for a man. Um, and the way that a woman's beauty is objectified is all about youth and suppleness and ability to carry children. <laughs> So, yeah, you, you fear you get left behind. I don't fear I get left behind creatively because every time I come to the end of a creative road, for some reason, I just begin another. So, I don't usually worry about that. Everything that has ever happened to me creatively has happened very naturally and just come out of natural circumstances, such as the people that are around me, the things that, that I, I'm exposed to through those people. And then just you just go forward to kind of your instinct. Every age has ap apocalyptic fantasies. I mean apocalypse is a very old word. So uh, we, we, it's part of human nature to be worried that the world is just about to end absolutely part of being human um, and if it was you know there are lots of things going on climate change the uh, technology is moving at such a fast pace people are afraid it's leaving them behind yes it's a bit of a scary time at the moment but it's always it is always a scary time I mean people were worried that we were going to blow each other up blow the whole planet to pieces with uh, nuclear weapons, which we could still do. 
but that was really a big part of the consciousness, you know, 30 years ago. Now, not so much now, it's all about, you know, there's going to be a great biblical flood and we're all going to have to, like, head to the hills or buy a boat. I hope it doesn't happen. <laughs> Um, because I've got a child and you know, it, do, it does add to that. It does add to the fear of that when you have a, a, a kid and you think about the future a lot more in those terms. I haven't been, in, in, in truth, been to very many exotic places and Istanbul does feel quite exotic. I mean, it's not, it's not Cologne by any means, or, 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 you know, Brussels, which, you know, just feel like an extension of the world that I live in. Most of the places in Europe are like that, um, that I visit. But Istanbul is, is, is very exotic to me and um, very mysterious. And I love the way, it, I love the way there is so much um, action on the street here, that everything is poured out onto the street that society is there, that you buy your goods off the man on the street, you know, and I love that because everything in our culture is inside, indoors, behind the closed windows, and also packaged up into big superstores and big malls and, and all these kinds of things that we have in our culture. I love the sound of the city uh, and when I get here I always open my window and just listen because it's such a sort of hum from the street and then it's always mixed with the prayers and it's an incredible, it, like the city sings. It's been a great multitasker, I've always been somebody that can do quite a few things at one time. And it is true that women are better at that than men. Um, and so at the moment, I, I'm feeling pressed, you know, from the pressure of, that's built, that's begun to build in me because I took a lot of time off uh, when I had my baby. And now I'm beginning to feel ready to, uh, to do something, uh, make a body of work again an album, I suppose. And uh, yeah, the, the pressure is building at the moment and I've begun that project. Um, and uh, took me a minute, you know, to actually be ready to be that creative again. But it sounds ridiculous, but when you do something arty or you're an artist, it doesn't matter what, what you're doing in your life, what's going on, you do have to remind yourself quite regularly that you are an artist. You sort of almost have to go, I'm an artist, I'm an artist, I'm an artist, I'm an artist, I'm an artist. Because uh, if you forget that, I think if, I mean, I would just forget myself completely if I, I couldn't be that. And, and also it's such a luxury to be allowed to be an artist. It would be a terrible thing to turn my back on it. The, you know, the fact that people want me to be is, is an incredible luxury. And I've had some very difficult times in the last year, but um, I've realized that when I write my songs, I have to put who I am into them now because I am older. And I, I guess when I was writing Overpowered, I was writing a lot of stories and really learning how to be a prolific songwriter learning how to write a song when I needed to, in any given situation. Um, but now, I, I, the music that I'm writing, I'm really reaching inside into the depths of me and pulling it out and put it, I'm putting it in front of people. And so, I'm in quite a vulnerable position with that. But um, I think it'll be all right. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody will be fine about it.